Queen. It's 420. We are here with the one and only Don Richard. Guys, you're blessed. We're blessed. Everybody's blessed, Don. Thank you for coming through. You know your family. It's family. Family style today, guys. I go to the Chinese restaurant. Sometimes I go family style. Yeah. Sometimes at about that time we go family style. See, I think you know it and it's the real thing. And you know, we've been together for a long time. It's true. And that's why it becomes family style. But you know, the first thing that happens when it's family style, would you like to do the, the honors here? Oh my God, okay. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> we're gonna do it. Yeah, okay, we're gonna wait. just go. Cause it's, that, it's about that time. That's what we do on About That Time. Mary Jane, thanks for checking in with us. Here we are, another beautiful installment on Tuesday. Uh, it's January 9th, but it's not January 9th, guys. Someone put a typo on my paper and I don't even know what day it is. So don't check the date because I'm wrong about it. Just oh. chill with us. Chill with Don. Chill with me. Don, do you want to meet our, our our friends that are chilling with us here? Hi, let's meet them. Yeah, this is Dennis the monkey. Oh. Dennis, Dennis is our buddy. Okay. He chills with us, and then you're sitting next to Bowie the cat. I'm okay. So I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a cat person. But it seems like you guys have a decent vibe, even though like you're not necessarily always a cat person, you know? I guess so. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna feline. I'm already a cat. Right, right. Like, with being a Leo, being a lion, so. I think it's a lot going on between us, but she seems, is it a he or a she? I think we could decide. Bowie is a sort of gender neutral name, I think. You could like chill. <laughs> Bowie could be whatever we want Bowie to be. Bowie is, is androgynous. Bo so we'll just, cause you know, Bowie is that. So we'll just give Bowie that feel. Bowie so he's the both. neutral. He's both, yes. Bowie the all. That makes me a little bit more comfortable when he's, if he's bi or both, it's, it's, it's my journey. All, all that, so yeah. to speak. Bowie, Work. the all that. Yeah, you're everything, Bowie. Get Bowie, it. you're Get everything to us. Yeah. Guys, I hope Get Bowie's it. everything to you, too. Um, Don, for the folks out there who don't know about the Don movement, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows about the Don movement, but just introduce yourself. Say hello. Let Hi. everyone know what's up. Hi. I'm Dawn. I'm a Leo. I like long walks on the park. Uh, <laughs> um, no, for real. Uh, my name is Dawn. I have been in, in this music thing for a, a while. A minute. A minute. And uh, I, I started it on a show called MTV, making a band with Puff. I was with Bad Boy for 10 years. Um, dope group of people, but a very hard group, group of people to work with because they're, they're at the top of their game and you got to be on that same level. I did that for 10 years. I was in a group called Danity Kane. I was in a group called Dirty Money, both incredible groups. Um, and then after 10 years, I was like, thanks Puff. I wanna try to do this shit on my own. And I uh, went indie. So I went from mainstream labels, Interscope, Atlantic, and I did the music that I wanted to do that my 13 year old self would love. Um, and I said, I'm gonna do this, this underground shit and give it a try. And for the last five years, I've had and made some of the most incredible music I've ever made. I've been in the tech space with VR, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented, augmented reality with some of the most incredible directors. Uh, I've been in animation with Adult Swim. I've animated and also curated musically some of their coolest shit on Adult Swim. And I've also uh, worked with some of the most incredible underground indie uh, d DJs and producers ever, uh, from some of which I've met you, which is Fade to Mine. Including my brother. Yeah, his brother Shout Kingdom. out to my brother. Amazing. Chilling with Dawn. Yeah. I try to get my brother on. He's like a little camera shy, Dawn. I get it. I mean, I'm not really... This would probably be the first time people even see me smoke. I'm pretty shy, too, about my... Guys, we love firsts on About That Time. Dawn just called that out. First yeah. time smoking on camera. Yeah, it's my first time. We I'm, are honored, Dawn. Yeah, I'm pretty private. Um, but I'm not because I'm like shying away from uh, cannabis culture. I just, uh, I'm just shy. I'm just more on my own about things. But I actually came into cannabis a different way than most people. And um, because of it, I have a, a respect for it because it kind of saved my life in a few different ways. But uh, yeah, I'm, break, I'm popping my cherry on your show. Dawn is popping your cherry at about that time, guys. I hope everyone is wearing Goggles, safety goggles, splash guards, <laughs> this whatever could it get is. Crazy. This is going <laughs> to be crazy. Very, very crazy. Well, Dawn, on about that time, we have a segment called Roll the News where we talk about some recent cannabis news from MaryJane.com and then mm -hmm. we discuss it. We, are mm -hmm. you down to roll the news with us? Yes, let's do it. All right. Um, well, the first story from TheMaryJane.com uh, is about a new study that adds evidence to the fact that cannabis legalization reduces violent crime. I don't think any of us are fans of violent crime, but I think that- Depends on the day. 
Well, some, my household. Sometimes people got to get <laughs> screamed at or or punched or hit or slapped, but that's okay. It's it's, it's all love. It's you know, love. physical something. It gets physical. My, my my household is pretty. We're pretty hands on. Okay, hands on. <laughs> but you know, it's sometimes passion is real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not not like we hit each other. I'm just saying. No, no. As a team, we might hit you. Me? I hope not me. I'm no, pretty. No, no. I'm, I'm pretty much a, a, no, a gentle we're, John over here, you know. Um, anyway, this story is about the fact, uh, you know, reported by Chris Moore, uh, that violent crime has been decreasing significantly in can illegal states uh, that border Mexico. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's all this bullshit talk from the current administration, hating on Mexico, hating on good country, other good countries, yeah. hating on cannabis. Jeff Sessions being a worm. So bad about, we just legalized and they're already trying to stop our freedom. Worms, bunch of worms. Crazy. That's what I say. Um, so, so boy, they probably use it in their corners of their home. True. The study was published in the Economic Journal and used FBI crime data from 94 to 2012 and examined whether or not crime rates fell after states enacted medical marijuana programs. They found that states on the Mexican border that have legalized medical marijuana saw violent crime fall by an average of 13%. I mean, it's real. It's in the numbers. They like to think, they like to tell us that our numbers, they like to lie to us, but, you know, the numbers are, tell us the truth. They don't like the numbers. They like to just they lie. They just like to want to say what the fuck they want to say. Yeah, they just make up. They it's like fairy tale. They don't want to pay, pay attention to the real deal numbers that tell us the Cannabis story. Cannabis saves actually, lives, folks. Cannabis it's a peaceful saves lives, place. guys. And it reduces violent crime. Um, there's a quote from economist Evelina Gavrilova. She says, whenever there is a medical marijuana law, we observe that crime at the border decreases because suddenly there's a lot less smuggling and a lot less violence associated with that. So I would say that, you know, that sounds like a very positive thing. Um, and with all this like hype around from the current administration uh, about cannabis, about violent crime in countries that border the United States, the numbers, the numbers don't lie, folks, but worms do. That's all I gotta say. Great research, great article. Yeah, it's really great. MaryJane.com. That's the kind of place you would check out something like that and be like, oh, it's really great. These fools be foolish. I know more than they do, and here I am just reading the MaryJane.com. <laughs> um, that was said with so much passion. I'm a passionate person. <laughs> Anyone who knows me can confirm I'm very passionate. <laughs> okay. Story number two okay. is about a music icon. Okay. Do you listen to country music ever, Don? I do. Country music is pretty chill. It's good. I like a little country music. Well, this story is about a country music icon named Willie Nelson. Oh my God. We One of the greats. Now, mm -hmm. there is a rumor. He's doing some incredible stuff with, go ahead. With the cannabis. Mm -hmm. Willie Nelson is down with the movement. Yeah, he is. He's been down with the movement. Yeah, him and Snoop have, have had shared stories about that. This story is actually a little bit about that because this story is an investigation of whether people may actually be afraid of smoking with Willie because he smokes so good. His Word. level of smoke has toppled some of the greatest. Now, we're going to break down some examples for everyone mm -hmm. of some instances that have evidence towards why people might be a little shook about smoking with, with the Willie Nelson. Exhibit A, Toby Keith wrote a song called Weed with Willie in 2003. His description of smoking weed with Willie, Keith says he passes through hell, getting a visit from the Grim Reaper after one pup ended up in the fetal position with drool on his chin. I don't want to do that journey. His conclusion, I'll never <laughs> smoke weed with Willie again. Yeah, I'm a no. That's a lot. I'm a no. But you know, we, Willie keeps it, keeps it high, so to speak, high level. Um, and Toby Keith wasn't quite on that level. And so he got got. Yeah, I won't do that. No. You have to know your limits when you're smoking with connoisseurs. Because you, you get into the moment, you're like, oh, this is chill. Yeah, nah. And then, you, and then before you know it, you're... Drooling, you in said. In fetal position with drool on his chin. That's kind of crazy. I don't think that's, that's my... Hard, yeah, I don't know. I'm not that kind of smoker. Okay. I'm not on that level. This is just example one, Don. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We're good. All right. Here we are. I don't, I don't want to not the, be The safe. folks understand. The smoke is in the air. Um... Exhibit B is Jack Johnson, another talented country singer. Okay, I don't know Jack Johnson. <clears throat> Willie Got Me Stoned and Stole My Money is a song that Jack Johnson penned. So first we have Toby Keith writing, I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. Then Jack Johnson writes, Willie Got Me Stoned and Stole All My Money. Apparently, not only does Willie like to people get people high AF, but he likes to get them high AF and then play poker with them. 
Oh, well, see, I feel like this not Willie's fault. This is the people coming into it. Obviously, Willie has been very open about the way he smokes. You have to know coming into this that you've got to come prepared. You've got to come prepared. You and play you've poker with. You got to make good decisions. <laughs> if you know that, if make you know that you're being pushed by someone like Willie Nelson, who is probably one of the top, yeah. top five smokers. Of, I mean, I in think he, it's not a secret what he what he's done and what he is. I mean, I no. even know. So the and fact then you're that putting money on the I'm table. I'm not putting money on the table when I'm coming in as a as a as a amateur as a rookie. You can't be playing. Guys, keep your money in you your pocket. You can't play Jordan coming in. No, you can't play <laughs> Jordan coming sure. in as a rookie, you can't, right? You can't. Willie Nelson is no the way. Michael Jordan of weed no, and no poker. Way. And so if you mess around, you know, like it's your uh, own fault. Wait, I don't know. I wouldn't go that far, but I'm, I'm just, I don't know if he's the Jordan, but he's, 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 on, he's on the Bulls team in that time. He could be a Pippin. <laughs> he's, he's on the Bulls team. He's definitely a Yeah, because I, I don't know. We, you know, I don't know. Snoop is. Got, he's got time to grow still, and I, I just true. think he's going to pass true. Willie <laughs> when he gets true. to Willie's age. The level of what he's done in cannabis is just going to be next level. So, Willie, Jack Johnson is not Willie's only ca cannabis plus poker victim. There's also an anecdote from Woody Har Harrelson who claims that he's proud to have built a Woody wing on Willie's house because he lost so much money to Willie playing poker that he believes that Willie built a whole new wing in his house just off the money that Woody Harrelson lost to him. Can I have a sidebar? Sidebar. Country is normally not that version of itself, yet you've given me so many legends that are talking about weed and country. How random is that? How random is that, guys? Open your you eyes. You think it's hip hop, some... and I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you mean six real. different people country People are rolling artists? dice. People are playing are they, poker. They, they, well, I, I think they're coming to smoke with Willie. They're coming to smoke with Willie, <laughs> but shit gets turned when you smoke with Willie. That's the lesson here. <laughs> and and it's amazing. The fact that we're talking about country. Country, country and, and folks much having cannabis. fun, man. Shout out to all our country fans out there. Yeah, with all that cannabis. Mary Jane, about that time, Don Rashad. Shard. Great article. Fucking with country music. We're gonna do one more. He's got another example, person. and it's someone who you may know who we're about to talk about. All right. The one and only Mr. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, that probably so, was legendary. I'm gonna read the entire copy here around the instance between the incident between Willie and Snoop Dogg. Of all the famous pot smoker Snoop's shared a puff with, Willie is the only one to make him tap out. In an interview with Be Real of Cypress Hill, Snoop said of Willie, that's the only person that's ever smoked me under the table. Snoop elaborates, I'm like, this old motherfucker gonna try to outdo me? And he really did. I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Hey, Willie, let's take a break and play some dominoes because I think we need to do something else right now. Mm. Willie Nelson. Yoda. Very Yoda high of cannabis. Yoda of cannabis. That's the thing. We can have a Jordan of cannabis and we can have a Yoda of yeah, cannabis. Yeah, that sounds something. Because it sounds like he's just mind fucking people through that journey. That's some Yoda shit right there. I'm going to get you out your money, smoke you out, and do it in an elegant way that you write a song about me. That's pretty Yoda. It's pretty Yoda. I agree. It's pretty Yoda. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a pretty high level there. Yeah. <laughs> Bowie seems like. Bowie you know, liked it. Yeah. Get it, Bowie. Bowie liked Grab it. it. Grab it, Bowie. Dennis liked it. Grab it. Dennis is keeping Grab it chill shit. over here. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I got, it's great. I got the Leo, Leo, Leo lions on the couch. You, you do, know. in the Bowie. Aries. Leo's Bowie's lion-esque, but not fully lion status, you know? What does that mean? I'm just saying, Bowie's a cool-ass cat, but it's not full-on lion. Eventually, Bowie, we may I got have... you. I'm not going to go, do that to Bowie. I think he has possibilities. He's got a lion inside. Okay. You know what I mean? He's just we'll ready, fight for ready that. to let it we'll out. We'll fight for it. Bowie, I got you. We're, we're in it to win it now. I'm going to commit to him. Dawn. Bowie, Bowie, you should thank Don. <laughs> Bowie's It's a good idea to have these guys. It's really great. You. Yeah, no, totally. They're chillers. I wanted a pit bull, guys, because I have a pit bull. However, we tried so hard and we couldn't we couldn't get a pit bull. Guys, everyone should say sorry to Don that about that time. <laughs> no, could not... I, that's not hard. That's it. No, <laughs> we couldn't I, get her a pit I said bull. we worked really hard to try. We, we worked did. hard and we tried. We, we didn't tried. get a pit bull. But you know who did just show up? Who? Look who's sitting next to <laughs> Pierre is, it's, no, that's Pierre the Pug. You, you got Bowie the Cat, that's Pierre the Pug. You keep giving me people that play on the team, but they're not the point guard. You're giving me. <laughs> I'll give you people no, that play joking. on the team. No, I'm just joking. You play on the team. You play on the team. He's that's great. That's Pierre the Pug. That's so it's Pierre, Pierre the Pug Bowie and the Bowie. Cat, uh, Dennis the Monkey. Dennis, oh, Dennis, Dennis the Monkey. Is, Dennis is forever Pierre the Pug, yeah, okay. Bowie the Cat. I got two animals and you have one now. It's true. 
But they're very comfortable with you, Dawn. I think that I you're... I love them. That's yeah, what I'm saying. No, I think good, my squad got vibes big. in the air. Good, my squad. Do, do you have a pet yourself? I do. I have a... That's why I asked for... I have a pet. What's His your name? His name is Rocco. Rocco the pit. And he is... Um, what color is Rocco? He's a fawn. Okay. And uh, he's one of the coolest dogs I've ever had. I'm not, I didn't grow up with uh, animals. Okay. Um, I had like one rabbit, but it was very short lived. It wasn't any, I wasn't ready for that right. journey as a child. Um, and I never had a dog and I was scared of them. And then I came here to this distant land and I met Rocco and fell in love. And now I love him. He's, Pitbulls get such a bad rep. Uh, and he's a rescue. And you know, people, you know, they say that Pitbulls don't have the temperament and they are banned from so many different places, even over, overseas. One of the coolest dogs I've ever, I've very ever. Chill, oh, very super loving. chill, super loving. Just don't be another dog. Our dog is not really uh, on not that. Not very dog friendly. Nah, nah. But he he does really good with. But good he's people. looking out for you guys. Yeah. You know what I mean. As he that, should. At the end of the day. As he should. He's a killer. Day. He's got his yeah. priorities straight. Yeah. You have a dog? I do not have a dog, but I am a lover of dogs. I think dogs are chill. You need to step it up. Go get one. You'll love it. Guys, maybe 2018. Don is pushing you could. me to get a dog. You it's could. It's a lot of responsibility. Take Pierre. Well, that's the thing. I do actually, when you really think about it, I have Pierre, you have I a have monkey. Bowie, I have Dennis. You, have, you know you, what I mean? You have a monkey. Like that's... I, have, I have a monkey named Dennis. People have monkeys now, man. Okay, it's funny that you mention that. Because <laughs> last night, me and my brother were watching a show called, I believe, The 72 Most Dangerous Animals of Latin America. It's on Netflix right now. Mm -hmm. And they break down all the most dangerous animals. And there is one monkey, it's a little monkey, and I feel like it's a monkey that people often have as pets that's listed on that list and they do a mini documentary. That was a scary ass monkey. Yeah, they're pretty They wild. show all these wounds that the monkey's like biting through people's hands and like not a good thing to have It's as all a pet. fun and games until it, he beats you up. So I, I hope, I wish the best for everyone with Guys, monkeys. Guys, monkeys can be wild. Don't just go buy a monkey and think you can have it as a pet without I some real professional strategy around that. Because <laughs> you'll, you'll get your ass whooped by a little monkey. You will not be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Get a pit bull. There's lots of beautiful pit bulls out there that want to chill. Super, super right? great. But yeah. I, I would draw, I, 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 you know, maybe a fish. I should start with a fish. Is a fish a pet? Oh my God. <laughs> I think so. I think they are. However, I think fish, you have to make sure you get the right fish because... You can get lost in not taking care of them, and they can, they pass away a lot. The fish pass away. Pass away a lot. It's important to be comfortable with death if you want to have a fish. <laughs> and why is that the child's first, get into that, all right? So you have to be prepared for death, and a child's normal first thing into, is a, is a pet that will die. Yeah. So they learn, you learn death young. You, you learn how being irresponsible can kill someone and, but, at five. But let's think about it. I think that that's kind of reasonable, right? You know, like, <laughs> you want the in, intro to death should be very low, you know what I mean, like a fish. It's not- Oh my God, a fish is still a per- like, not no, well. no, you can they, still have a connection still, to a yes, fish. Did like, you, wait, did you have a fish? No, don't play me like that. Yeah, but I, I feel animals, I have a respect to animals where I feel like it's all the same. You understand? Even if you're a fish, I just feel like why would we give a five-year-old that responsibility? Because that's normally what we tell younger kids is the first pet they get is a fish. Poor fish. Poor fish. <laughs> like the responsibility is a five-year-old. He's not gonna make it. We've, Guys, we're killers at five. I hope there's no one too young out there watching. We've, <laughs> we've just shared some heartbreaking <laughs> we're information. We're murderers, we're murderers. That fish do not live forever, guys. They we don't, love fish. especially goldfish. They, get, they die they really, it's horrible. They will not live forever, guys. Shout out to your fish but, out there. You, you keep fighting that good fight. But you know, <laughs> fight fish, fight the good fight. We believe in fish reincarnation. <laughs> Maybe you'll come back as something cool, you know? Like and, Pierre. Yeah, like Pierre the pug. You could be one day you think, "Fuck, I'm just a fish," and the next day you wake up and you're a pug. That's kind of cool. A pug. This is such a great idea. Smoking on the couch with show. the one and Smoke. only Don the, the, Richard. This is so About good. that time, Mary Jane, Don Richard, getting props, talking pets. Guys, this is some next level shit. I hope you're keeping up because we're having fun. Um, this is great. The third story from tonight's installment of Roll the News is about. This Jeff Sessions headline from mm. last week, you, you caught that headline mm -hmm. where the minute we went legal, yeah, he then was all like, he tried to trample all over our party. Mm -hmm. That was pretty unchill, huh? Well, well, some people are trying to look on the bright side of that and say that this move may actually solve a lot of the banking issues that the legal cannabis businesses have been experiencing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just give a top line overview, which is that we legalized in... California, 1st of January, right? Mm -hmm. Then 
probably a week later, we have Jeff Sessions coming out saying, I'm gonna remove the Cole Memorandum. The US prosecutors in these legal states have the right to enforce the federal law. But what it seems as though may actually happen is that the Cole Memo itself will push Congress to actually act to create proper protections for the cannabis industry and potentially end prohibition even more quickly. So mm. it's a dangerous moment out here because things are not known. But many people inside the cannabis industry are saying that they think that it may inspire Congress to act and do something they should have done long ago, which is reschedule cannabis, or at least create an infrastructure around which we can have clarity. So these businesses that are pioneering, they're delivering medicine to people that's important in their lives. Um, you know, so look, there's a downside. It's a bumpy time. Jeff Sessions is a worm, but um, you know, there may be a bright side to this wormhole is what I'm kind of trying to tell you guys. So, um, you know, as we reported on an earlier episode of About the Time, 60% of Americans support legalization. Um, so I think people just got to open their eyes and realize that, you know, we're going to keep fighting and there's a lot of solutions out there and hopefully we can get the government to get off their um, tuchus and do the right thing, right? Yeah, well, the government will get on their tuchus if they feel like they can make money off of it. It'll change once they feel like they can manip monopolize, monopolize it in it. some type of way and make some money. Right now, for them, they don't see their benefit. Right. Thus, they're making it harder for the cannabis community. The moment they figure out how they can benefit from it, it'll change for the better for them in that process. And then they'll want to do something about it. Right now, it's hard because it's such a new and innovative like time for, for cannabis. They haven't figured out how to infiltrate it yet. And so that's why Jeff is doing all of this crazy shit. Once they figure out how to... like get into that, it'll change because they know they'll see how lucrative this business is and what it does for people. Saving lives is not what they care about. That's why they don't care if people get their medicine. They don't see cannabis in that way. They but we, we know a little different. Yeah, we know different. And I think yeah. one, one, you know, like, there, it will be no choice but them to have to get on the, on the train because this train is going to leave with, the, they know it. it's too powerful. There's so many great things in cannabis that I think they would, they don't want to lose out on that, the amount of money that this will make. Guys, it may boil just down to money, but it will. even so, let's hope, let's keep fighting to make sure that good things happen. Yeah, as it will. Things change, it will. I, I think it's an, it's inevitable. Cannabis is just too. The market is so great, and it's doing so much incredible things. I don't. I don't. I don't. I think it will be all right. I agree. It'll, It'll be, be all right. right. Things are gonna be all right. Now, I have an even better piece of news, Don. All right. Which is that roll the news is sponsored by our good friends at The Weekend Box. And they have a new edition of The Weekend That's Box. That's beautifully gifted. Collaborated in collaboration with Caviar Gold, some of the strongest cannabis medicine in the world. Wow. Guess what, Don? Hmm. This is a gift for you. What? What? About you that time, you, guys, you come you through, you chill out, you get to meet <laughs> Bowie and did Dennis. You hear this? And... Oh. Gift package. Look at this. I'm gonna open it for you because this packaging is very complex. It's so good. It's so classy it's very too. Very complex. But I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. you to the. Oh heart. my God! The money. Right. <laughs> I've won. Here you go. Weekend box just for. This looks like a cigar box. It's, it's like awesome. a cigar box in a complicated. Oh my God, to guys! Open bag. Let me see Look if at I that. can. That's gonna be a happy home. That's gonna make a home happy on a weekend. Somebody's head is a band member is in. Oh. <laughs> That's Pierre, Pierre, oh, oh there we go. No, we it, was the, a, we it, was a, it was a band member. We got close in. Oh, a band member, yeah. Look at that, guys. Caviar Gold, Weekend Box. Roll the news here on Mary Jane. We're trying to keep people's- This is awesome. Eyes open, ears to the street. Here, would you like me to rebag it? Or yeah, we, sure. Here we go. Guys, one thing, being a host of About That Time, it seems like it's all fun and games. But I have to do complicated things like figure out how to open the weekend boxes bag, which is a very nice bag. But I will say it's it's not intuitive. If you've done it once, then you're in a better position. But doing it the first time is really really complicated. Maybe we can give them notes so they can. Weekend box for Dawn. Ow, 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 blinking, blinking. The Look, news oh, I'm, I'm hitting got the shit rolled. out of you guys. Sorry. Now, Dawn, you had hinted at a couple things earlier that I think are, uh, is worth talking more deeply about with the folks here in the world of Mary Jane. You've had a very interesting story with your connection to cannabis that mm. I would love to share with yeah, everybody out absolutely. there because it's a very interesting story. Why don't you tell me about? your experience with cannabis through your life? So I'm not your conventional smoker. Uh, I came from a very conservative family, uh, you know, Catholic, New Orleans, Louisiana, born and raised, uh, very stern, very educated, um, edu not educated, uh, ed they were educators, teachers. Um, and so we were very, 
as you can say, you know, stern in the house. Uh, so I didn't, my ideas to cannabis was it was wrong, drugs are bad. Well, as I got older and I was in music, of course I was always around people that smoked, but I really wasn't fascinated with the idea to smoke. I just felt like my voice was mad husky. I don't need to make it any more huskier when I smoke flowers. Uh, then uh, my father was diagnosed with cancer. And that was a blow for our family because we had, you know, we didn't know anything about why we, he would even be getting cancer. He's so healthy. I was lucky enough to have a really great partner who was educated in this, in the field of cannabis. He had been for a very long time. And he was like, you know, CBD pills showing me what could work in, in the sense of cannabis oil for pain. And I did a lot of research with him and I was telling my father, let's try this. Of course, you know, my dad is like, he just did this not they can't wrap their head around the idea that cannabis could save them. They just think of the idea of it being high. However, I have fibrous tumors. And if you're a woman, you know that that's extremely painful for a woman to go through, uh, especially every month she goes through something. It's incredibly painful. You have a choice to remove them or they tell you to get on medication. I personally don't want the medication. I think it's really bad. So I thought I'd try cannabis because I had researched about the CBD oils, uh, different, it wasn't just uh, flour, it's bath salts and all these different things you could do to really go through medical uh, cannabis that can help help you. So I got a card out here and I, I just gave it a shot and tried it and it, it saved me, man. Like I, I didn't have pain, I could go through my days and actually work. There's some days I couldn't even get up out the bed. This gave me an opportunity to do all of that. So I kind of felt firsthand like cannabis is a, move, a, a moment that I need to, right. and, you know, be a part of and a movement that I need to be a part of. So I found what works for me and I, I, I'm a, a, a different type of consumer because there are a lot of people like me that don't, you know, we come in, in it a different way and we see the benefits of cannabis. So it is real that like it does work for people in a, in a, in a lot of different ways. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's how, be, that's how I got into cannabis and, and now it works and I appreciate it and, and I'm very open about it, but that's why it was more private for me. Yeah. I wasn't always smoking cause it wasn't like, I didn't come into it that way. I kind of came in from a different angle and it became something that I, that, that I is a part of our, my lifestyle. But I think it's a really important story to share, especially right now, because yeah. I think more and more people are going to be taking that first step now that the legal barriers to yeah, because I was able, well, I and I did it. Yeah, I went and got my card. I went through a doc to a doctor because it was something that was really because I had talked to my physician about the possibilities of doing uh, cannabis and holistic mannerisms for my for the, my my tumors. But you know, they were here because you live in LA. They're open minded here, so he was actually saying you should check out the cannabis. So it was it was really cool hear that there is a, a response to cannabis in that way when you know I'm from the South, they ain't even trying to hear you talk about yeah. you know, getting a card or having access. LA's very lucky that it has that ability to even do that. And because of that I got my card and then I was able to man do it, you know, do what I was able to do. And now that it's finally available and is is recreational, I just feel like we got to get through to set to the government. They have to understand how important that is for people. It's going to change things and make it a way more easier because it was a process just to get the card and get all that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so talk a little bit more about your family's perspective. Yeah. On this, because I think there's an interesting nuance there because you came from a background like I grew up in a house where my dad actually smokes weed. So um, cool dad. That's, I mean, shout out to my dad. <laughs> cool dad. Cool dad. Uh, true. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't, it's hard for me to understand what it's like and and how that experience is coming from where you came from and, yeah. and, and how that can change over time too. Absolutely. Well, no, it didn't change over time. My parents don't think weed is the beat. Like they're, they're not fans of drugs. No one in my family, they don't even drink. No one drinks or smokes in my family. It's very, very conservative. Uh, and they have a very clear view of what we, you know, cannabis is. I'm just, I've always been the one the wild one, the, so, so to speak, I, but maybe? But I wasn't even wild. I was really, I was actually pretty conservative too. Like I just was artistic. I was just free. I didn't, I had a different, so I'm the only one with all the tattoos and all the, the other things, but, and they don't have a, you know, they're not like, yes, finally this works for you. I think they would prefer I'll find a better route, but um, I'm grown, so it's fine. And they're very understanding. They just have their own views of what it is. But I come, I'm pretty sure there are people who have households exactly like that, you know, and they have to figure that out. But yeah, they, they still don't see it that way. Okay, and even do you feel as though the medical angle is something that you can talk to them about? And no, I've tried. I, when my dad had cancer, right. yeah, he just was like, I'll just fight through it. 
Wow. Yeah, but that, but I think that's just where you come from and, and being in the South and not even the South, maybe some households, other places, but I know especially in the South, you when you're told something is taboo for so long and you've grown up your whole life in the 50s and 60s, it's, it's a harder process for you to reach to get to that place where you believe, because people have told so many of us that weed is bad, yeah. that cannabis isn't something that you should be um, indulging in. Um, you know, so my mom and parent, they come from a different time. I think they understand the new nuances of what it is, but I still think for them, they think that's not the root route, but they don't judge me. They just kind of like, yeah, that's that dawn. That's chill. Yeah, but it's cool, because it works for me, and I, I'm not going to get, I'm good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Guys, about that time, Mary Jane, chilling with Don Richard, sharing cannabis stories, sharing cannabis triumphs, yeah. sharing good times. Family time. Yeah. How did you get into weed? Um, well, I mean, I was always kind of a kid that was into like cool, weird music and like wanted to be a skater and was just always like kind of trying to push the boundaries for like whatever the precious thing was around that I could uh, find. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, cannabis as a subcultural thing was sort of like always around. And uh, I grew up in the Boston area and we had a... Um, we had a yearly cannabis music festival called Hempfest, even in like the early 90s. And all of the cool hardcore bands and, uh, you know, actually a lot of different genres of bands from Boston would play a free concert in uh, Boston Common and people would smoke weed openly in front of cops one day a year in Boston Common. And so like that was sort of like the genesis of this scene, which was like, you know, cool music and like this like kind of cool day. and. You know, that was always just part of the culture. So it was something it's I've been, uh, been down with uh, since, I was, uh, since I was into that kind of stuff. Man, completely different lives, but still brings us together. It's true, Don. The, <laughs> it's not just the it's weed like that brought us together. It's but true, it's all Don. Good. It's no, all good. No, but it's true. It's, you, I think cannabis is awesome because it brings the most, I mean, different people together for one little, and it's the, it's the coolest thing. It brings everybody happier and, and together on it. You meet the most random people. I went to one event and I, I promise you there was like a mom, she said they do like cannabis moms, a thing where they smoke like parents, they take one day out of the thing and they smoke. I was like, yo, I would never have thought to meet you and have that conversation. It was completely different lives in one room and cannabis came and brought them together in one different way. It was really cool because it was people I would never expect to smoke, some that was smoking. Um, I think that couldn't be better said. It's, uh, it's definitely a funny thing, uh, the way that the weed brings folks together. Speaking of bringing folks together, uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been, about 2017, what you did yeah. musically and, and what we can expect from you down the road. I had an interesting journey because I finished the trilogy uh, I don't, uh, when I did my five years uh, of indie, doing everything on my own and really trying to bring this indie movement uh, up to the forefront. You know, I've all, I, what I've realized is that indie culture uh, is really good in hip hop. Like it thrives and, you know, you can be independent and I don't have a label and thrive in hip hop. Or if you're a woman in hip hop, it is a better chance but if you're in pop culture and you're unsigned it's really hard to compete in that level because people can't fathom you being in pop culture and being unsigned and actually being able to compete and I really wanted to push the idea that that's possible so this last trilogy has really been about people seeing the indie cult you know an indie artist just really do everything on their own and create something really artistic so the end of this year I finished my last album of that trilogy um, and I was really excited because we'd done a lot of great things that nobody had done. VR, visuals, choreography, a lot of really incredible things. So this year I, I promised myself, I told I was gonna quit. I was gonna be like, I'm done with this music shit, it's too much. Um, but what I realized is that there's a really good movement of people who are just like me, who are trying to really break the waves and push the culture forward. Um, so I got back in the lab, got a new album coming out. Um, I'm taking my time on it because I really think this is something that needs to be super separate from what I'd already done. Something really me, really raw and really honest uh, and not as artistic, but more just in the grass, really rooty um, and give them something a pe that's a piece of me. So I've went to Cuba at Fresh. the end of the year. I think I saw some photos went to of Cuba, you in Cuba. Uh, with one of my favorite people, uh, Monty Marsh, he's a director. Um, he's one of my favorite people to go anywhere with just because his, his, he's a visionary to me, one of my favorite photographers, even though he doesn't, photography isn't even something he you know, claims, even though he's really incredible at it. Um, and we went out there and we 
did a photo journal. Uh, we had uh, we did like photo class. We went to percussive different percussive shows, and we really understood and learned and learned what the culture of Cuba is. And they're really beautiful people. Uh, and I wanted to be re-inspired for this new album. And so he's going to be coming out with a photo essay of all the stuff we did out there. Um, and I, I'm going to do some music out there with them for this new project. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, and then the end of this year, I've been working with Adult Swim, mm -hmm. which shout out to Adult Swim. Hi, Adult Swim, I know guys. probably half your people that watch this show probably watch Adult Swim. Uh, I'm a kid that's a geek. I've always been, so I, Adult Swim was a dream of mine to work with those incredible people. And so I w started doing singles with them. And then I said, you know, by the way, I draw. And they were like, no, you don't. I was like, nah, I kind of do. Though. You know, and I, I told them I wanted to work with them. And they allowed me that pleasure and uh, started drawing with them. And now I'm trying to pick, pitch a few shows with them to do some really incredible stuff over at Adult Swim. So between that, the album, I got, my hands are going to be tied on some really cool and innovative things for the, for this year of 2018. So yeah, I got a lot of cool stuff coming through that I'm really excited about. Uh, I get to, to work in more than just the music space and that's really fun. But the whole point is to really bring indie culture forward and not just in say indie rock or not just say in hip hop, but women, women in, you know, like women in, in the indie space and what we can pos we can really do beyond just the, the cliche idea of what we, you know, what is, only popping in that genre. Art is a big thing. Yeah, it is. It is, and it's and it's it's a good time for music because people are starting to find their own shit that they like. You know, like radio used to tell us what to like, but and it was only certain genres that understood that you had to go find it. Indie rock was one of them. That's why I grew up loving indie rock music because you could find your little underground band and really like love them. Same thing in hip hop. You'd have your favorites that were big, but then you had the the cool catch Raekwon and all the cool stuff that was like underground that you were like, that's what I love. You never really had that in the more popular mainstream places. So um, it's exciting to try to push that forward and show people now because of social media and technology, you can really touch whoever the fuck you want to and like who you want and the radio is really obsolete. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've been putting out so much cool shit. It's like always, it's always exciting when you just drop all the stuff that you put out. Cause yeah. It's always different well, flavors and And, and I did stuff with y'all, and... man. I did stuff with y'all that was bomb, one of my favorite projects. And, you know, I think that's a prime example of an indie, an indie, man, an indie label that rocks, man. I love Fade to Mind. Fade to Mind, shout I out. Do. Dawn's and giving a shout out. No, I do, Ezra, man, I do. Will, yeah. Esma, Daniel. Just really, really dope people. And, and I just feel like um, people got to see that more. I know we're cool with being in, you know, I know it's like, we're cool being where we are, but I just feel like, you know, people should see how fly. Guys, you can be fly. Yeah. No one's gonna, it's not easy, but if you what? work at it, you can be fly. You could be Noah. Well, guys, you there may be, be a contest you, later. <laughs> There's like a newsletter sign you up, could you know be what Noah. I mean? Sir, speaking of which, Don. I'm on fire Sometimes at all people times. do like to be Noah. There's actually video. Sometimes people like to make fun of me. They do a lot, like impressions of me doing this thing. Really? They yeah. make fun of you? Does yeah. it hurt your feelings? It doesn't hurt my feelings. I think it's important to <laughs> laugh. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. You know what I mean? If I think you can't, they're if making memes of you. If you can't take a little like Josh in, then, you know. They make memes of you. Uh, it, it's memeable for sure. I'm gonna be mean too. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's I, cool. I, I, I mean, that's the thing. Everybody get memed. You know what I mean? Like that's just that's the world. It's gonna we happen in. because I have a dog and a cat. Any a black girl with a dog and a cat next to her with smoke coming out of her ass is like a meme. This whole thing is a meme. <laughs> this whole guys, this world that we live in is a meme. <laughs> this right here. Where does life begin? It's like I'm only the one on fire. Like I'm the only one that's getting smoked. Well, I mean, I'm it's, from, it's from it's the me. amount of I think cannabis it's me. that's in the building. No, you know? but it's just on. Dennis and, and, and Bowie. Please just only leave it on me. Yeah, we're hot. So it's us. Right? There you go. It's warm. We keep it warm. It's, it's just hot in here. Okay, Don. Speaking <laughs> of getting hot, we can cool it down a little bit. Okay, Because okay. you know what else we do on About the Time? What do we do? We do astrology time. Oh. It's time to talk a little astrology. Oh. I know, we talked a little earlier. Okay. Look at this. So the first oh, thing the that happens. Oh, the lights go down. The lights go down. Oh, Look shit. at this. We break you know our... I'm black. I need light. Okay. Wait, I need light. I'm brown. Where am I? Oh, you don't. Where I'm, am we're not I? in it. Oh, we're I mean, not none in of it. us are anywhere. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Let's get a little more light. A little more light. We're no. nice and pink. There we go. Like everyone, everyone. This can. is incredible. Here we. Now we're in astrology time, Don. Okay. 
I didn't. I don't think I even asked you about. Did I ask you about your chart before you came? No. Well, this was, this was I'm, have you had? You've had your natal chart done. You're a woman who's interested in astrology. I think you definitely know about the fact. Yes, that you're I a Leo. am. I am. And this it, this reminds me of Miss Cleo. Remember Miss Cleo? Guys, Yo, I am Ms. the new Miss Cleo. <laughs> remember Miss Cleo? John has called it. I was wondering call what me my now. calling. Remember what you said? Call me now. <laughs> I didn't know what my calling in life might be, but Don thinks I should be the Miss New Cleo. <laughs> Agree this or right. disagree? Okay. Up to you. Okay. If you guys agree, if I get a lot of comments, I'm going straight this. Cleo. Oh my God. I can't. What what's, what's her tagline? What's her? Call me now. Call me now. <laughs> me now. I, I probably. I, Yours you know, is not the same. Call me now. You know what I mean? Just, you sound like a sex infomercial. Call me now. I sound like a sex infomercial too, guys. Not only am I the future Miss Cleo, but I am also a living sex commercial. I didn't say, I can't make these things up, guys. Wait, it's up there. <laughs> Yo, you guys are amazing. That was so bad. That was so fast. <laughs> We're all here no, in awesome. astrology this, time this doing amazing. it. I love it. We do what we can. So you're a son in Leo. Your son is in Leo. I'm, you're a Leo. I'm a, I'm a Leo double. Son is a double Leo. Uh, and like what, double rainbow. You're a double rainbow. <laughs> I like a double. Double rainbow is better than a single rainbow. Like but it, yeah, no, I'm good. gonna double. Are I'm there like, two pots of gold too? Do you think, or is it like, do the two rainbows come down into one pot? Well, of I'm gold? gonna be honest with you. I, where I'm from, I tried to take people up on that offer, and I ran to the end of the rainbow, and there was no goddamn gold. It's a trick. It's a lie. It's a trick. I tried. Yeah, it's an optical. You can't tell illusion. no kid from the hood that they're gonna try to figure that shit out, and it wasn't. It was a lie. There was no gold. That is. Something that, guys, we don't like to like. We don't like to remove all the mystery of childhood. But yes, I'm, there is no pot of gold at the for... end of the rainbow, Don. I've killed every child. Sitting on all these dreams, <laughs> so harsh. And so Leo of you. It's very Leo of me. Um, Staying realist. Uh, so maybe you're a Leo with a Leo rising. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, double but, Leo. And then a moon in Gemini, maybe is what I I, I came up with here. No, I didn't get that. But okay, moon, maybe I know my son. I know the rising is in Leo, so that must so be. So double it. Leo, strong strong times. You want to here. So what we do on astrology sometimes, astrology time is like I'll read you some of these descriptions and you tell me whether you think it's accurate or not. Because this accurate. is a this is like a you know I got I've got a. It's gonna a, be accurate, but go ahead. It's gonna be accurate, guys. You're Cleo. Because I'm the new Cleo. <laughs> Check Cleo. Cleo <laughs> dropping facts right here. Okay, Moon in Gemini. Uh, let's see, what here? Works in contact with the public, literary occupations, and travel. Come yeah. on. Dead on. Dead on. Dead on. Not even, there's nothing even to discuss. No. Do, you, do you like traveling, by the way? It's, it's, the, it's my favorite pastime. I, I really do love to travel. I, I will spend all, it's my guilty pleasure, and it's the one thing I'll spend the most money on. Traveling. Yeah. What's your, do you have a, favorite, a single favorite place or do you like to go a lot of different places? Okay, so Cuba was really crazy for me, so I think that was up there, but I'd have to say Thailand is one of my favorite places that I've ever been. Uh, most kindest people. I've, I mean, it was, it was so kind. It was so incredibly beautiful, but the people in itself were so kind. Um, it was really great. Thailand? Thailand. Asian Costa Rica. Just putting that out. Have you been to Costa Rica? No, I have not. Costa Rica's hella chill. Thailand's hella chill. Yeah. Thailand, if you're wondering, kind of... Kind of Asian Costa Rica. Yeah. Tropical. I don't know about surfing, that. Surfing. <laughs> different food. Very no, different food. I don't know food. about that one, but I. <laughs> chill countries. Thailand, Costa Rica, good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Love it. I think that's great. <laughs> I'm trying to digest myself on the coast. That's great. You said the food's different, though. Yeah, food is different. Thailand, you like that like spicy Thai food, Don? Well, see, because I've been vegan, uh, Thai was perfect. Thailand was perfect. Yeah, lots of veggie options. Yeah, right? so noodles, good. Tom Kha. Times, Tom Kha is amazing. It's my coconut favorite. Coconut milk. Yeah. <laughs> you can just do it up right. Damn, now I want some Thai Cleo food. Cleo is on a road. Let's go. We need, guys, we don't have a sponsorship from like Postmates or even a Thai restaurant, but like we need something like that so we can just like push a button and then, you know, it emerges. And then, you know, we're looking out for Bowie and for. Uh, Bowie Pierre has not and, looked my way Dennis. once, which makes me know that he don't fuck with me. But let's go. At least. Bowie's fighting for me. Okay, this this actually ties directly <laughs> to the next aspect of your chart okay. that I want to discuss. On okay, astrology let's time. do it. The conjunction between Jupiter and the big. Say U. that three times. The <laughs> conjunction between Jupiter and the big U. Pretty good. She knows what's going on at a glance. That's what it says. She knows what's going on at a glance. You did you just sum, you summed up Bowie like that? You're like Bowie, don't fuck with me. He's not looking at me. <laughs> this is kind of right here. This is happening right now. You're like yeah, you made a snap. You. You're like Bowie. That dude doesn't fuck with me. Yeah. That it doesn't fuck with me, guys. We've decided that Bowie is gender neutral. Sorry, anyone who is angry about that. It's 
No, they'll be fine because he represents all people. That's Bowie represents all people, guys. <laughs> if you felt at the moment that Bowie wasn't representing you, you were wrong. Huge shout out. My dad is a Virgo. Loves the Virgos. And my mom's an Aries, and this Aries thing, I, I, someone told me they're an Aries, and I just don't really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mars and Cancer, last, last moment of astrology time. Okay. Works rel re relentlessly for the well-being of the family. Yeah. It's True. a lot of work keeping these families together. It is. It just does, it doesn't happen on its own. No. But when you have someone like me, Pierre, In the family. And Bowie together, all of us. Don't we, forget Dennis. Oh, well, Dennis. What up, D? <laughs> Dennis, what up, D? What up, D? Yeah, with all of us together, you know, we've got to figure it out. We've got to keep the... Got to keep the Cubs. Got to keep that family together. Got to keep the Cubs together. Well, it feels like I have family in the building when you're here, Don. I mean. I really appreciate it. Obviously. Super you got excited. me to smoke, dude, in public. That's like. I got I, Don to smoke. That's like no one does that at all. Except for me. Because I'm the new Miss Cleo. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> we're going to step out of astrology time. We've had a lot okay. of fucking fun. That was incredible. We were there. For real. Oh my God! You don't. This is like when you're in the right. club and yeah, yeah. you think the <laughs> bitch is, is like, real oh, pretty. You think oh that shit, bitch, that time You think again? that bitch is gorgeous, but then them lights come on and you be like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's what you just did to me. Let me push yeah. back. God Night, damn. Nightlife. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nightlife. Yeah. You can't be coming up on a girl like that though. You got to remember when you have girl guests, you got to be a little less aggressive with the lens. <laughs> That's great advice, guys. <laughs> Dawn, this is the final segment of Astrology Time where we invite you to tell us what the folks out there should be checking for. Yes. For yeah. So, hi, guys. Hi. Again. <laughs> Mary Jane, about that time, Dawn Richard. You can catch Keeps me. Ears open, yeah, folks. you can catch me uh, online. Uh, DawnRichard.net is my website. But, you know, I'm on SoundCloud, Spotify, D A W N R I C H A R D. But I just go by Dawn. It's easy. Dawn. Uh, but I have so much stuff coming up that if you literally go to whatever you see and I just told you, I'm yep. on every platform. Uh, and if you want to buy my albums, you should maybe go on iTunes because there's a lot of them. And when Prolific. I mean a lot of them, I mean a lot of them. I was in 17 groups. So you've got to start from the very beginning and then go all the way down. So knowing, can... knowing Dawn <laughs> is a real, real journey. It is. It's, you got to go deep. It's a lot of music, but... Um, I think you'll see some incredible stuff well, and some visual music. stuff. Yeah, some really incredible videos as well. I pride myself on my uh, my film my film team. They're really incredible. So check me out, guys. Guys, uh, Mary got Jane. Some cool stuff. Make sure your eyes are open. Check it for Dawn. Doing good things. 2017, five years trilogy. Yep. Proving you can do it on a high level independently. 2018 and beyond. Yes. Sky's the limit. You sound, I sound like Star Wars. Guys, <laughs> we did go to astrology beyond. time. It yeah, may be a little crazy. bit like Star Wars. Or space balls. When I'm around it, sometimes it gets a little more space balls. I love Star space balls. I just watched space balls not too long ago. It's good. Man. Did you watch the new Star Wars? Yeah. I'm a, I've, all, all of them. I am yeah, yeah, I'm hardcore. Did you like it? Eh. <sighs> Me too. It was a little whatever. Are you going to watch the Black Panther? I'm going there with a dashiki on and some door knockers and an afro. Absolutely, I'm gonna be in there. So hard. I heard. I hope it's so that, black that maybe it makes people uncomfortable. I heard that they're doing. <laughs> I heard that there's multiple Kickstarters out there that people are donating money so kids who aren't able to afford a ticket can go and see. Black yeah, Panther. I would do that. Guys, if anyone is aware of that out there. Donate some money. There are people all around the country that would love to go Please see Black Panther. Please support this film. Myself included. Please support Dawn this Dawn included. Film. Support this film. Yeah. We're going to have fun. It's so good. And if you didn't know a little trivia for you, the female Roxane Gay, one of the first black females to be able to write for a comic for Marvel. So that's why, I, and it's the Wakanda series. So again, please support this because we're doing some really incredible things in the culture of comic, comics and it looks brown for a change and I like it. So go see it, God damn it. Testify. Guys, thanks Testify. so much for <laughs> thanks so much. You're for, like a black woman now. It's, I, it's getting Don. It's all your Cleo fault. Testify. You know, we went to astrology time. We came back, and I'm, I'm just feeling very different. I don't know what it is. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for checking in. About that time, daughter Shard, Mary Jane. Check out Dawn, guys. She's one of the best of the best of the best of the best. I love you guys. Peace. Peace. Hit that shit. <laughs>